Well, welcome to all of you. And we're just so delighted to have all of you here to have this amount of interest in, in your spiritual journey and meeting with all of us and meeting with these two wonderful people. Some of you already met Gary and some of you David last year. And with David is Claire. And we just want to welcome both of you here. When David came in today, I said it was like he never left. And I think he never really did. Yeah, right. Um, any of us, any people in our group will say, well, David's name comes up often, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, David said. <laughs> now we'll be going, Gary said. And I said, but I said that. <laughs> to me too uh, in my study group. They didn't really listen to me until I wrote my book and all of a sudden I became really, really interested. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I have to write my book or go to Maine sometimes <laughs> or Cincinnati or something. Anyway, it's, uh, I know what a treat we were in with regard to the opportunity to join in this kind of, uh, of a session uh, and to do this for the next three nights uh, is just uh, just so wonderful. And somebody was saying, well, you know, if I come tonight, what about the other nights? Are they any different? And they're always, aren't they? From our last year's experience, we just never know what the Holy Spirit will bring, bring through for our healing. And so we just uh, are on an adventure, uh, on a wonderful journey to nowhere. <laughs> All in dreams. So, uh, so uh, we're just, it's an opportunity to just ask questions, bring up issues, uh, clarify things, uh, and both Gary and David are happy to respond, right, Gary? Yeah, sure. Just absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, shall we start the night with just centering ourselves and in, yeah. in quiet and just... job in the world. <laughs> and, um, and I'm very honored to be here with Gary as well. Um, we have been doing a lot of the same thing. Uh, if any of you see the web or whatever, but we these bodies have been traveling <laughs> all over the place. And we're going to be down in uh, Australia together in November. Just happened to coincide and then Sarah inviting us. So the Holy Spirit has brought us together and um, and we are here to uh, call on the Holy Spirit to bring clarity, uh, to address your questions with the Course of Miracles, uh, since both of us teach about the Course of Miracles and are very involved with it, and also uh, the practical application. Uh, that's what my whole life has been devoted to. I have been traveling around and doing these gatherings for like 13 years and living on divine providence, kind of like Jesus and the Apostles. It's a very experiential journey for me that, that is a very profound thought system. And I realized when I first opened the book that it was my way out of conflict. I'm sure a lot of you have had that experience where you start working with it and you go, Oh my, this is an answer to a prayer. And um, so the metaphysics of the Course are very important because it really sets the stage for the workbook and for the laboratory, the transfer of training, and um, that's what's great. You can ask both of us a lot of questions because here we are, we're 
we've both been called, we've been traveling around and of course applying it in our own lives. And that's what you're doing. And so it's, it's helpful to be able to get clear on the metaphysics and it's also very helpful to have examples. And Gary's book is loaded with questions and answers uh, with the Ascended Masters. And everything I've done for the last 13 years has been the same thing, just sessions like this with lots of questions and answers where anybody can ask anything. There's no taboo topics. Uh, there's, there's nothing that's uh, sacred in terms of things. It's just feel free to, to bring things up and ask from, from your own experience uh, to let this, the question come up. And uh, we'll do our best. How's it working for you, and how do you handle it? Like with Gary, at least sales of the book, uh, I would think make you feel secure that you can go around and not worry about money, but I guess I'm just projecting my own stuff in here. I would worry. If it were me, I'd be worried. <laughs> and I'm wondering, and, and I'm worried, and it is even me. Since we're all one, I guess. Yeah, I think the last, probably the last year when I was here, you were bringing up yeah. those financial concerns. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> through the instrument a piece again. Yeah, so we kind of did that the last time yeah, too. Yeah, yeah that I think uh, for me, uh, the Course is a teaching that, that you have to go real deep with it, and it's about giving up reciprocity. And uh, early on when Jesus said, you know, freely you have received, now freely give, I had a lot of dialogues back and forth with Jesus, like, uh, uh, are you talking about the same realm that I'm talking about? <laughs> and uh, I don't, I've never found a tree that has $20 bills or you can just them and harvest them whenever you need them. And, uh, but actually that's exactly what the Course asks you to do, you know, with lessons like Lesson 50, I Am Sustained by the Love of God, is a real God dependence kind of lesson. And Lesson 76, I Am Under No Laws But God, where he you know, calls money uh, green paper strips and piles of metal discs. I think we need a, a new version with the plastic cards in there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> pin numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. pin numbers in there. Yeah. But, uh, no, actually, um, I had a lot of miracles back in 1991 when I first started doing this. And I, it's like the Holy Spirit just kind of knocked my socks off with uh, that first trip for five and a half weeks. I mean, I, I was staying on a, one night at a campground and another night uh, sleeping on, on a houseboat, uh, so many different things were, were offered to me and came in so many different directions that I think my first lesson was just pride at receiving. Uh, you know, I would refuse a lot of things initially and the Holy Spirit would say, you know, that's me offering you that place to stay or that meal. Uh, don't let the pride get in the way. And of course there was a fear with that pride, but I was pretty quickly able to just say, wow, this is, is spectacular, These, I am so well taken care of uh, as I go around. And I felt how profound, that this was a very profound calling, and that I was saying yes to it. And so that began a, just a series of oodles and oodles of miracles, and that really convinced me that there wasn't anything to be afraid of. And I don't take anything for granted. I mean, recently I was on a trip this year, and... I was going through a city I'd never been to, Las Cruces, New Mexico, and, and Kathy had talked to somebody there, and, and the man uh, phoned me and said, um, I, I've traveled a bit like you, and I've shared a course of miracles on the road, and I'm so honored that you're doing what you're doing, and he said, you know, can I take, if you come through Las Cruces, uh, can I take you out to dinner, and can I buy you a motel room, and all this and that. And I'd never met the man, I'd never been to Las Cruces, I wasn't even doing a gathering there. He was just calling and, and on my cell phone and offering you know, to buy me a meal and to a motel room. And I was just, again, like a little kid, like, 
oh my gosh, just <laughs> feeling the grace of God, as if it was happening for the first time, mm -hmm. even though it had happened thousands and thousands of times, it's always like the first time for me. Like, like wow, that's a miracle. You know, I, did, I don't just take anything for granted. So, no, I don't, I don't feel uh, fear around um, being provided for, because it's come at me in so many different ways. Uh, I've done a lot of world travels recently, and, and it was, they've all been either donated tickets or uh, frequent flyer miles. Uh, a friend of mine had been praying He'd, he'd worked this deal where he'd flown a bunch of Latin American airlines, and as part of some promotion that he got, he won the grand prize, the bonus of one million uh, wow. frequent flyer miles. <laughs> and, and he happened to be praying and saying to God, uh, I'd like some of these miles to be used in the service of your plan. Uh, and two days before that, uh, a friend of mine, Resta, had, had received an email from Argentina saying, so happy to hear you're coming to Argentina, even though we didn't make any conscious plans to do it. He met me, he said, I've always wanted to go to Argentina, I didn't even have a passport, uh, but in six weeks, uh, there I was with four or three friends. Uh, some of the, you met them last time, uh, Arresta was with me, and uh, Carrie was here last time, uh, and Dave, the, my travel angel, I called him. So those are just examples about how it comes in all kinds of different ways, and it's so abundant that I really don't have any fear whatsoever around uh, how it's going to work out, because I know it's the Holy Spirit really running the show, and thank God. <laughs> yeah. how, did, uh, how did you get into it? Because, for instance, I feel that's what I would like to do for you guys to I've even written books and not published, but I would like to travel in and talk about, you know, the course, a truth wherever, you know, it comes from, you know. And so how, how did that unfold, you know, for, for you? How did you get into, you know, doing, going from a 9 to 5 gig, if you ever have, you probably <laughs> have one before, to, you know, where you're just like a free spirit in the wind and being provided mm -hmm. for abundance? Yeah, yeah, either one. We're both, we're both <laughs> Well, I've been kind of like ridiculously lucky because uh, I had the whole thing just handed to me on a silver platter, uh, basically including the book that I wrote. I'm not really the author of it. I'm just the uh, student in the book. I'm not the teacher. And uh, what happened was these two ascended masters appeared to me in person on my living room couch, which was, uh, you know, pretty high up there on the uh, weird shit <laughs> <laughs> And uh... <laughs> Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> information over a period of nine years, and all I had to do was, you know, keep track of it, record it, and write it down, and, and I did, uh, you know, work for, you know, long minutes between numerous breaks in, in order to uh, write my narration for the book. So there's my story in the book of how it all happened and, and how it affected me, and it, it's just all gone so smooth. You know, they were, they were telling me what to do with the book all along, and somewhere along the line, they taught me how to pray in such a way that I could uh, receive inspiration from the Holy Spirit. As you know, the word inspired means to be in spirit. And so I learned how to pray and join with God in such a way that it wasn't about getting anything. You know, it wasn't about making things happen in the dream. It was just about being with Him and being with His love. But uh, a funny thing happens later on when you do that. It's kind of like an after effect that comes from doing it. And uh, what happens is you might be, you know, like, kind of like sitting around doing nothing special, and all of a sudden an idea comes to you, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, that's it. And that's what an inspired idea is like, and it kind of like guides you. You can feel the Holy Spirit guiding you as to what you should do, you know, if you have a decision to make, what the decision should be. So I feel like, you know, that's really helped me a great deal to know what to do. And everything has just gone so smoothly, it's been, you know, really easy for me, so... I'm having a great time. I'm being, I feel like I'm being pampered. I haven't 
I haven't done as much as, as David here. He's been doing it so much for so many years. This guy travels so much, it's like I can't go anywhere without people saying, oh, yeah, David was just here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying with that, with that guidance, it, it, it comes with ease, right? You're saying it's not a thing where you have to struggle, because I don't believe in that. I've given up struggling for anything in my life. Like, you know, I, I, I won't do it. So just, it's a yielding again, I guess, right? And just paying attention to what you're being. Yeah, yeah. It's very easy. Yeah, that's cool. And the struggle doesn't do you any good anyway. You know, it's not, it's not productive anyway. And uh, there are really, you know, a couple of basic ways of getting inspiration. I just described one of them. I didn't go into detail. But there's a certain kind of prayer that leads to inspiration. But also when you practice forgiveness, you know, the kind of forgiveness that's taught in A Course in Miracles, then that really clears out the stuff in the unconscious mind. As the Course describes, it removes the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. And as you remove those blocks, you get more access to the power of the mind, and then you start to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit a lot more clearly also. So that leads to inspiration. It's kind of like, uh, you know, we're resigning from being our own boss and we're letting the Holy Spirit take over and be the boss. And so now uh, we're, we're following a wisdom that's greater than our own. Thanks for the, the be ready because I was telling Pat I won't share if you guys want later. But I had an interesting dialogue with a tree about, about, uh, so I do know, like we said, weird stuff does. <laughs> because I told my friend, and my friend's like, are you schizophrenic? Like, <laughs> I said, yeah, I can tree, and that's what I got. Send it master's trees. <laughs> you ready. When you're working with this course, you got to be ready. Well, there's a poem that says, uh, roses are red, violets are blue, I'm schizophrenic, and so am I. <laughs> And so 
for the last, I mean, I read the Course for about eight hours a day uh, when I first got it. It was just so much like, this is it, that uh, I had nothing better to do uh, with my time. I still had things that I had, duties, responsibilities, I would handle those things as well. But, but it, when I could squeeze eight hours out of the day, I would spend it with the Course. I still had resistance, uh, you know, to the message. So my eyes would get heavy, and I would want to fall asleep, and then I would, the Holy Spirit's so gentle, you know, go take a swim, or have a nap, or take a walk. Very loving, easy, gentle, you know, nothing, you know, go to the mountain and meditate for 12 hours a day, or something like that. Uh, so that really guided me uh, into it, and then it was around 1991 that I was impelled to start traveling and teaching what I would learn, just putting myself out there to be truly helpful, like the prayer said. And I was very well aware that I was just teaching myself. So that really sped up, I call it the enlightenment experience, because you have to be willing to let go of everything you think you know. You have to be willing to let go of of thinking that somebody else is providing for you or that you're providing for yourself. Really, it's the Holy Spirit that, that's the provider. And all these years of travel have just uh, given me lots of opportunities to, uh, to heal. To the point that I, I got to a point where I just got so joyful and so happy that, that the, the upsets just vanished and disappeared. And so now it's not so much the words I say, because obviously when I go to, I only speak English, so I go to other countries now and, and I, have, I smile a lot and I get a lot of hugs and people hug me. And then there's like usually a trail of translators following me around that are, aside from my smiles and hugs, that are putting the words uh, into the language where I go, you know, German or Spanish or so forth. And it's, it's the attitude, our, our, the Course says, uh, to teach is to demonstrate, and it's really our attitude that's the, the demonstration. And I'm very happy, and so I tend to have a lot of people uh, that are drawn, even in restaurants and, and on buses and trains and subways, people come up and they start talking to me because I'm very happy. And that's really the goal of the Course, is to, to be constantly happy, you know, to reach a state of salvation or enlightenment, and then to just continue to be in that state, and naturally teaching and reflecting and radiating what's inside you. And I should say that the, the curriculum of the Course is really not about love, it's about removing the obstacles to love. So that Mary's book and everything that I talk about and write, uh, we don't just generally just show up with the flowers and go, God is love and all is love, and, you know, do that kind of thing. Generally what we're talking about in our gatherings is uh, when stuff comes up, uh, issues, and you're tempted to project and to blame, of uh, bringing it back and saying, okay, this is my lesson, uh, I need to hand it over to the Holy Spirit instead of pointing the finger. And that's what I've been doing for 13 years, is just uh, joining with everyone where everyone believes they are. It's not like about coming and just say, God is love and all is love and affirmations and this and that. But this is really a course in removing the obstacles. And when I join together with everyone, that's what we do. So that's how it went for me. It's just, uh, it started like the theory. It was very easy. I feel uh, it was like grace. It was just like handed, it fell into my lap. And then I said, it's in English. It's not even in Hebrew or, or Latin or Greek. And I said, <coughs> I really had the feeling initially like I have I have no excuse now. I I better really get busy <laughs> uh, with the inner work because uh, I've got a, a wonderful tool in front of me and and now it's up to me to take it all away. Thank you. Thanks both of you. Forgiveness isn't like our world's forgiveness, and Gary and you too, David last week, talked about it. So the forgiveness isn't um, about seeing the Christ in others, 
Is it about the miracles? Is it about surrendering to the Holy Spirit? Is it all those things? Like it, it's sort of a, a big thing. It's not about our normal forgiveness that we do on earth or on this planet. Is it many things? That's I'm just not remembering right at the moment. Well, Terry, and that one is basically the Santa Masters came at that over and over and over <laughs> in the book. Well, forgiveness is about releasing yourself. You know, the reason the people are, are innocent isn't because uh, they're really there. The reason that they're innocent is because what we're seeing is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we say, well, we're forgiving him for this or for that. But we're not really forgiving him for this or for that. We're really forgiving him because we made up the whole thing in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, taking responsibility doesn't have to be a heavy thing. You know, it's just remembering that we made up the whole thing in the first place, and there was a reason for it. And the reason for it is something that was erroneous. It was a false belief about ourselves. We thought that we were guilty. And so we had to make up this universe of time and space as a scapegoat, you know, so that the responsibility and the guilt would be seen as outside of us instead of inside of us. And once we understand that, then we can kind of like reverse it. And it's like my teacher said, uh, You've got to learn how to turn the tables on the ego. The only way to forgive what is within is to forgive what seems to be without. And that's the only way out. So forgiveness is really about uh, undoing the blocks you know, to the awareness of love's presence by forgiving these images that seem to be outside of us. And what these images are, are symbolic of the contents of our own unconscious mind. And so as we forgive the corresponding symbols of it, the Holy Spirit is like healing our unconscious mind at the same time. So instead of being divided over and over and over again, as we forgive, it's like the mind is becoming whole again. It's like returning the wholeness and sameness. The word holy comes from the word wholeness, originally. So it's like, you know, we're undoing all this stuff. It's like the Course says, your, your job is not to seek for love. Your job is to seek for all the areas that you have put a barrier in between yourself and love. And as you forgive something that it turns out we actually made up ourselves, then the mind is returned to wholeness and sameness. So, as a summary, to make it real straightforward and simple, the world teaches forgive your brother and sister for what they did. And the Course teaches forgive your brother and sister for what they did not do. Now, again, like Gary's saying, the only way that second part part would make sense was, what if it was make-believe? What if it was a hallucination? Uh, what if it was your own mistaken hallucination that needed to be released? It had nothing to do with what your body's eyes were perceiving. You know, that the five senses were made up by the ego, and they're in cahoots with the ego. They just constantly, those five senses, bring witnesses to separation and fragmentation. <coughs> and so forgiveness is going to have to be you know, within your mind. It's like you've got to get back there in the projector room and you've got to even get behind the film <laughs> before you're going to actually have a full release. <laughs> Much less being out there in the theater going, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's, oh, that, stop, stop doing that. You see, from that metaphor of the projector, we have to get way, way back beneath the film, which is like the subconscious mind, way back to that light that's way back there in the projector. So, there's even a, um, a major motion picture now called Dark City where they actually have a scene in it that teaches forgive them for they know what they do or teaches that you forgive somebody for what they didn't do. And the main character is, is realizing that this dark world is made up by these dark thoughts and that it's all a, a, a setup, it's all a plant. They're, they're planting memories, stolen memories, formed, rolled all together uh, based on grievances and hurt and pain, and there's one point where the main character is in prison and his wife comes to visit him and on, on the other side of the glass, and she thinks that she's uh, committed the sin, she's committed adultery, she's cheated on her husband, and she feels very guilty, a lot of remorse, and she starts to talk about it, and he says, no, he didn't do it, and she says, I didn't do it, <laughs> no, he didn't do it, somebody just wants to make you think you did it. Uh, but but he 
he's on to the whole trick of the whole dark city world, that it's all false memories and false thoughts that have been planted there to make guilty. So, you know, she says, it seems so real. <laughs> and he's, again, he's, he's, he knows. No, no, it's just a, it's a false memory that's been planted. Uh, it's not real, you know. And then they end up, uh, they end up saying, I love you, and they reach out uh, to touch their hands on each side of the glass, and then the glass shatters. Mm. And, and she says, you can't fake that. And then they reach across the glass and they embrace. I mean, I thought, oh my gosh, finally on the major motion picture, uh, uh, a teaching of the Course, that you forgive your brother for what it did not do. So that's why you have to really work with the Course and let the Holy Spirit really uh, convince you that the world is a hallucination. Because as long as you think it's real, and as long as you think that you as a person is, are, are real, it will seem as if things are being done to that person. The role of the accuser will seem to appear in many forms. And Jesus says, it will seem to be accusing you. But have no fear. It will go at last. <laughs> ah, that's good.